Howdy, my name is Nonat, and do y'all remember this? This is the core rulebook for Pathfinder 2e, and we haven't talked about it in a solid two months. So let's amend that with something you have all been begging me for. It's time for the Ranger Class Deep Dive for the Pathfinder 2e system. I'm so excited to finally talk about the Ranger because it is my single favorite martial class in the entire system. A lot of people say, oh, but the Alchemist is a martial class, and you're right, but I don't like it. I like the Alchemist, I just, in my brain, it's not a martial class, even though by the book it technically is. My brain is weird, okay? Get used to it. But the Ranger just has so much cool stuff going for it. It's completely different from any other Ranger I've seen in any other fantasy battle-focused system. And I'm so excited to talk about it. But before we do, I gotta talk about our sponsor. Now, you may have heard me talk about Roll for Combat a lot on this channel as our very generous sponsor. But did you know that Roll for Combat has its own actual play podcast? Yes, not just one, but they have two different adventures they are currently playing through and one that they've already finished if you're looking for something new to binge listen to. Every Friday, you can look forward to a brand new episode of them playing through the Agents of Edgewatch Adventure Path in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. They already have 33 episodes into this, so if you're looking for something to really sink your teeth into, you can really just binge these hours of content and watch them play through the amazing Paizo-written adventure path, Agents of Edgewatch. Alternatively, if you're looking for a newer series that's not quite as far along, the Roll for Combat Three Ring Adventure podcast episodes come out every Tuesday and are only eight episodes in to playing through Extinction Curse, another Paizo adventure path. And finally, if you're looking for something that's already finished, that you can binge from start to finish without waiting for any more episodes, their playthrough of the Fall of Plaguestone adventure is done and is 34 episodes long, all available right now. So if you want to check out any of these three Roll for Combat shows, check out the links in the description. There will also be a link to the Patreon for the Roll for Combat show if you wish to go and support them and unlock some unique features and benefits from supporting their show. So as always, thank you to Roll for Combat for sponsoring this channel. Definitely go check out their multitude of shows, but for now, stick around and listen to this one as we talk about the Ranger. The Ranger's base stats are pretty much average for a martial class. Strength or dexterity is a key ability score and 10 plus con mod hit points. They start with Expert Perception, Expert in Fortitude saves, Expert in Reflex saves, and Trained in Will saves. A very solid starting set of saving throws and skills. Speaking of skills, they're trained in Nature, Survival, and 4 plus your Intelligence modifier. Most classes only get 3 plus Intelligence, so it's cool that, again, they gave the Ranger that one extra skill just as another way to diversify them and give them a little bit more character than something like a Fighter. They're trained in simple and martial weapons, as well as light and medium armor. Really, the only thing that rangers can't use is advanced weapons and heavy armor. And really, if you're playing a ranger, you wouldn't necessarily want heavy armor, though I could see some cool builds with it. All rangers start with the Hunt Prey feature, and this is sort of the key to 90% of what the ranger can do. For a single action, you pick a single creature that you can either see or are currently successfully tracking. This means if you're smart about things, you might be able to hunt prey before combat even begins, saving you that action. You know, if you're following a dragon to its cave, and you've found its footprints or tail marks on the ground, you can hunt it before you even get in the cave. While you have a creature targeted as your hunted prey, you gain a few bonuses. First off, you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to seek it. And since you're already starting as an expert in perception, you're getting a massive bonus to seeking hunted prey. Additionally, if you've already managed to hunt it, you get a plus two to survival checks to track it. So once you've picked up the trail or something is running away from you after you've already hunted it, you are even that much better at following it and tracking it down, as a ranger should be. Probably the most important flat benefit you get from Hunt Prey is that you can shoot from your second range increment with no penalty. Usually that would inflict a minus two for attacking in the second range increment not if it's against your hunted prey. However, keep in mind this doesn't reduce the increment penalty. If you go into your third range increment, it's still going to be a minus four. 
Once you hunt prey, it is hunted either until you hunt something else or until your next daily preparations. Once you have hunted something, it is set for the full day and only you can end it. There's also nothing that says it goes away if you fall unconscious. So if you drop unconscious and get back up in the middle of combat, your prey is still hunted, which is super cool. Now on its own, hunt prey is not that powerful, but it's made to be combined with Hunter's Edge. This is the Ranger's subclass, and they have three options, each of which will give you bonus effects against your hunted prey. The first option is Flurry. If you want an incredibly accurate Ranger and the most opportunities to land multiple hits in a round, you cannot do better than the Flurry Ranger. The flurry, as long as you are attacking your hunted prey, your multiple attack penalty is reduced by 2, so instead of minus 5 per attack, it's only minus 3, so long as they are against your hunted prey. And keep in mind, agile still applies, so instead of minus 4, it's only a minus 2 multiple attack penalty at level 1. Also, also, a really clever way to use Flurry, if you're surrounded and only one of the things adjacent to you is hunted, you can attack your non-hunted prey and then use your second attack on your hunted prey to get the minus two. You can't do this in reverse though. If you attack your hunted prey first and kill them and then kill some or attack something else, that'll still be your normal multiple attack penalty. But this is absolutely insane. Seeing someone at level one land three hits in one turn is so freaking cool and flurry rangers are the ones who can do it. Precision rangers are great for snipers or people who just want to land one massive hit per round. The first time per turn you hit your hunted prey, you deal an additional 1d8 precision damage. That's it. Once per round, you get to hit for an extra d8. That's insane! Again, at level 1, something like a longsword is a d8. This would be like putting striking on a longsword at level 1. This damage goes up at level 11 and 19 to 2d8 and 3d8. And boy, that extra damage adds up. The biggest struggle for the Precision Ranger is definitely the level, I'd say 6 to 10 area, because you're still only getting 1d8 from Precision, so it means a little bit less then, but it's never nothing. Getting to add 1 to 8 bonus damage to 1 attack per round is massive. And finally, Outwit is something that, as a new player, I did not like whatsoever, but looking into it more, I think it has a lot more potential than I originally thought. When you have a hunted prey, you get a plus two bonus to deception checks, intimidation checks, stealth checks, and recall knowledge checks against that prey, as well as plus one to armor class against their attacks. Now this isn't terrible. Now again, as a new player, I was thinking, oh, this doesn't help me hit more, this doesn't help me do more damage, what's the point? Well, the skills they selected for the outwit edge, stuttering, the skills they selected were on purpose. Intimidate gives you a bonus to demoralize. Deception gives you a bonus to fainting against them. Stealth is self-explanatory, and recall knowledge is always useful. So if you have this bonus to outwit, especially if you can start to critically succeed at some of these skills, you can make them flat-footed for your entire party. You can become your rogue's best friend. And sure, this will not help you personally as much as something like Flurry. You know, flat-footed versus a lower multiple attack penalty isn't exactly the same thing. But if you can let everyone in your party hit more often, that's fantastic. And that's it. That's all rangers start with aside from their level one feat. Typical for a martial class, you know, you get your subclass and that's about it, but boy is this a really spicy subclass. It's fascinating to me how the Ranger has probably the least amount of subclass text, but is also one of the most impactful subclass choices. You know, if you pick Flurry, you might not be using a greatsword. I mean, you still can, and that's what I love about the Rangers. You can use pretty much any weapon with any of these. But you know, if you pick Precision, you probably won't be trying to attack a bunch of times per turn. It'll really help you decide your basic combat style with your subclass choice, and I love that. As usual, we'll talk about class features first, and they're pretty boring early on. I shouldn't say boring, standard. Skill feats, general feats, 
Third level increases your will save to expert, which means by level three, rangers are expert proficiency in every saving throw. Third level gives skill increases, fifth level gives ability boosts and ancestry feats, and weapon expertise increasing your proficiency to expert with simple and martial weapons. Additionally, with ranged weapon expertise, you gain access to the crit specialization of all of your weapons, but only if you're attacking your hunted prey. This is kind of cool. It basically just makes your crits against hunted prey even better, so not too shabby. Fifth level also gives the ranger a unique upgrade to the cover tracks option. Usually, to cover your own tracks, you need to move at half your normal speed. A level 5 ranger can move at full speed while also covering their tracks, which makes them really hard to follow. Level 7, we see reflex saves and perception proficiency both increase to master and weapon specialization giving bonus damage based on proficiency. Nature's Edge is a really interesting class feature. It's not going to come up too often, but if an enemy of yours is standing in difficult terrain that is naturally caused, so magical difficult terrain does not count for this, if they are in naturally occurring difficult terrain, they are flat-footed to you. Period. Doesn't matter if they're a higher level, doesn't matter anything, they are flat-footed to you. This also works if the difficult terrain was created specifically by a snare. Level 9 also increases class DC to expert. Level 11 is a pretty solid power boost too. You get Juggernaut increasing your fortitude saves to master and auto crit succeeding any normal successes. Medium armor proficiency increases to expert and they get wild stride, meaning a level 11 ranger can ignore naturally occurring difficult terrain and greater difficult terrain, I don't know, maybe something like a hurricane or something you just can't move through, that becomes normal difficult terrain. This is just really solid. Though I will say, natural difficult terrain is something I've seen underused by a lot of GMs, myself included. Use more vines, use more underbrush, make things a little harder to move through, it'll spice up your combat. Level 13 is master weapon proficiency, level 15 is greater weapon specialization, and level 15 is legendary reflex saves. Once you have this, you can no longer crit fail a reflex save. You either roll a normal failure or a crit success. Those are the only two options. Additionally, if you fail a reflex save against a damaging effect like a fireball, you automatically take half damage. Isn't that great? Also at level 15, perception increases to legendary. Rangers see everything. Now level 17, Masterful Hunter, is incredible, but I have some gripes. Let me explain it first. First off, class DC increases to master, and if you are proficient in a weapon that you are attacking your hunted prey with, you can now attack from your third range increment with no penalty. So if you have a 120 foot range increment, you can attack from up to 360 feet away at full bonus. Also, the bonuses to perception and tracking from the hunt prey feature increase to plus Four circumstance bonus. That's on top of your legendary perception. And finally, the big one, your Hunter's Edge subclass you picked at level one gets upgraded. If you picked Flurry, your multiple attack penalty goes down by another one. Yes, if a Flurry Ranger at level 17 is attacking with two agile weapons, their multiple attack penalty is minus one, minus two. That's it. And since you cannot accrue more than two multiple attack penalties, if you are quickened and can attack four times per turn, you can attack at full bonus, minus one, minus two, minus two. Not to mention certain feats that may or may not give you even more attacks. The precision upgrade allows you to proc your precision damage a second time per round. At this level, your damage will be dealing 2d8 on your precision strike, and now if you hit a target a second time, it deals another 1d8. And at level 19, your base damage goes up to 3d8, and the second damage goes up to 2d8. So if you can hit your target twice in the same round, that is 5d8 bonus precision damage. Really solid. Also at level 19, you get an additional 1d8 if you can somehow hit your target a third time. If you're not flurry, I don't think that's going to happen necessarily too often, but hey, you never know. And Outwit's upgrade is kind of lackluster, I'm not going to lie, especially compared to the other two. Flurry and Precision, they're just more damage, you are just better in combat. 
automatically. But Outwit, you only get an upgraded bonus to Deception, Stealth, Intimidate, or Recall Knowledge if you are a master in that skill. So you only have so many skill increases. So if you're an expert in three of them and a master in one, well, too bad. Only the master skill gets upgraded to a plus four circumstance penalty. Penalty? Bonus. Now a big thing is the free plus two to armor from attacks by your hunted prey. That's massive, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't feel good. Precision and flurry get theirs automatically. Sure, there's the prerequisite that you need to be master proficiency in your weapon you're using, you're gonna be. But if you want to do intimidation and stealth, well, you're not a rogue. You only get a skill increase every two levels. Bumping those both up to master is gonna be tough. Let alone all the recall knowledge skills of nature, arcana, occultism, religion. I forgot religion. So my problem with Masterful Hunter is that it's the only class feature of its type. Rangers have nothing to look forward to like this from level 1 through 16. They get their subclass at level 1, and it does not change until level 17. Now, part of this may be from the design restriction of these different things. You know, how could you improve Flurry without making it completely broken at level 10? I don't know. I'm not a game designer. I think there's some that could be done here, something that could be fixed. Let me know down in the comments what you would have done. It would just be cool to see, like, a level 9 version of Masterful Hunter, like Veteran Hunter, that gives something like this to each subclass. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to see. It would just give Rangers something to look forward to in the mid-game, rather than their only big upgrade coming at level 17. Level 19 is a kind of weird upgrade. You get Master Proficiency in Medium and Light Armor, which is great, and also only a level 19 Ranger can sleep in their clothes comfortably. Only a true master knows how to do that. I also have some light issues with Swift Prey. This feels like it could have been an earlier level feat, like a level 10 or 12 class feat, making your big level 19 capstone, you can hunt prey as a free action. Doesn't feel great. You know, fighters get legendary in all weapons. Monks get like master in two saving throws and legendary in a third saving throw. Rangers save one, maybe two actions in an entire combat. Eh. But enough talking about class features. This is a martial class, which means they have a hundred feats to cover, and rangers have some really cool ones. Starting with Animal Companion, which is actually a bit more than most Animal Companion feats. You do gain a normal Animal Companion, akin to a Druid or a Beastmaster archetype, but a Ranger's Animal Companion benefits from their Hunter's Edge subclass. This means if you're Flurry, your Animal Companion also has reduced multiple attack penalty. If you are Precision, your Animal Companion also deals 1d8 bonus damage. And no, it does not consume your proc of Precision either. If you and your Animal Companion both have Precision and you attack the same target, you both deal an additional 1d8. This is nuts! Alternatively, Crossbow Ace is pretty good for crossbows. As long as you're wielding a crossbow and you either hunt prey or reload your crossbow, you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to damage for your next strike with that crossbow. Additionally, if you're using a simple crossbow, which every crossbow in the core rulebook is simple, you get to increase the damage die one step, either a d8 to a d10 or a d10 to a d12. What's kind of special about Crossbow Ace is you don't need to attack your hunted prey to get the bonus. It just applies to your next strike. So you can reload the crossbow, fire it, and again, you know, if you have a normal crossbow, you're dealing 1d10 plus 2 at 100 foot range. That's really good. The attack does need to be made that turn, though. If you reload the crossbow and don't shoot, you don't get the benefit. Hunted Shot was originally only for bows, anything with a reload zero, which was just a short and a long bow, but now there are some firearms that also have a reload zero thanks to their clip. So with that, you can also use Hunted Shot with a gun. Once per round for one action, 
you can shoot your hunted prey twice. Now it does need to be attacked against your hunted prey, but this is super cool. You can make like a machine gun ranger with like an eight bullet clip and just pow pow hunted shot. They do suffer from multiple attack penalties, so your second shot will be at minus five, but this is still two attacks for one action. And with the addition of those new reload zero firearms, Monster Hunter is underrated and not enough people take it because it doesn't deal more damage. When you use the Hunt Prey action, you get to recall knowledge about it for free. Additionally, if you critically succeed at your Hunt Prey action against them, you and all allies you tell get a plus one circumstance bonus to the next attack roll against that creature. And note, that's to their attack roll, not their damage roll. This is like really good. And it's a circumstance bonus to so you. If you have a bard giving inspire courage as a status bonus, that stacks, which means you can give your fighter another plus two. Also important is that this does not go away. Once you give your allies that information, it doesn't matter when the fight starts. Once they have that information, their first attack against that creature gets a plus one to hit. So you can do this in the middle of combat, you can do this while you're tracking a creature. It's a great feat, and I have not seen anybody take it, but I love it. Twin Takedown, basically the same as Hunted Shot, but it only works if you are dual wielding weapons. For a single action, you can attack your Hunted Prey twice with normal multiple attack penalty. This is, of course, really good for agile weapons, as you only have a minus four, or if you're a flurry ranger, minus two. Favored terrain. You choose your character's favored type of terrain, and right there at level two, you ignore all non-magical difficult terrain given by that kind of terrain. If you choose arctic and you're on a bunch of cracked ice, you don't get slowed down by that. Additionally, once you reach level 11 and get Wild Stride, which gives you the ability to ignore natural difficult terrain anyway, you get an additional benefit based on your selected type. If you chose Aquatic, you gain a swim speed equal to your land speed, and if you already had a swim speed, it goes up by 10 feet. You can swim real fast. If you selected Arctic, you basically are permanently hibernating even though you're awake, you only need to eat and drink one tenth as often as a normal person. This means you only need to eat one meal like every three or four days, which is actually really cool. And you don't need to roll to balance on things like ice and snow. Also, you aren't affected by severe or extreme cold environments. You can just walk around the Arctic in your underwear and be fine. Desert gives you pretty much the same, but for heat. You don't need to eat one-tenth as often, same to uh, severe and extreme heat environments. And you can walk along loose sand at full speed, once again without needing to balance. If you picked forest, mountain, or underground, you gain a climb speed equal to your normal speed, and if you already had a climb speed, it increases by 10 feet. If you picked planes, if you picked planes, your land movement speed just goes up by 10 feet. Sky is a cool one and could make for a really interesting endgame character, but if you happen to have a fly speed and you picked Sky as your favorite terrain, your fly speed increases by 10 feet. It's really niche and you need to somehow know you're gonna get a fly speed, but if you can make that work, ooh, ooh. And finally, if you pick Swamp, you can move across boggy marshland at full speed, even if it would be deep enough to require you to swim. I don't know how that works, but it sounds hilarious. Hunter's aim is just consistent. For two actions, you attack your hunted prey. You get a plus two circumstance bonus to this attack and ignore their concealed condition. If they're hiding behind some cover, sure, it doesn't get rid of their cover bonus to AC, but they're no longer concealed. I would highly recommend this one for precision-based rangers, as that plus two gives you a really high chance to crit and the precision damage does double on a critical hit. Monster Warden is a direct upgrade to Monster Hunter, and along with the plus one bonus to attack rolls against the target, you also get a plus one bonus to your next saving throw against an effect from that target, and to your armor class to the next attack 
from that target. Now this gets to be a lot to keep in mind. I think if you're gonna play this, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get some kind of token because each one of these benefits is taken off separately. You get your bonus to attack, you get your bonus to a saving throw, and you get your bonus to an AC. You need to know when you've spent each of these and which one you have left. But amazingly, you also give these to your allies. Think about this. This is a level two feat that just by critically succeeding your recall knowledge, you are giving yourself and all your allies plus one armor class, plus one to saving throws, and plus one to an attack roll. At level two to your entire party, and it doesn't wear off. Why is nobody taking these feats? Because they all want quick draw so they can draw their weapon and attack for one action. Everybody takes quick draw, and I understand, because it's a great feat if you get ambushed. But it's so boring. It's good, but it's boring. And finally, Wild Empathy at level 2 allows you to roll diplomacy to make an impression on animals. You can't speak their language, but you have a natural kinship with nature, and I think this feat is a great way to represent it. Level 4 is Companion's Cry, and if you spend two actions to command your animal instead of one, they get an additional action. By default, you can't usually do this, so you can take the feat and then you can spend two actions to give your companion three. Disrupt Prey is attack of opportunity for the ranger and triggers on manipulate actions and move actions. And if you critically hit the attack, it disrupts whatever action procced it. Not bad. Far Shot. This is a passive bonus that doubles all range increments. This, with your Hunt Prey feature, can let you attack from very far. I'm just saying a level 4 ranger with far shot and an arquebus can shoot their hunted prey from 600 feet away at no penalty. That increases to 900 feet at level 17. Favorite enemy. You pick a specific type of enemy, specifically animals, beasts, dragons, or fungi and plants, they're the same choice, and if you ever roll initiative and you can see one, you can hunt one of them as prey as a free action as your rolling initiative. Very nice. And again, combine this with Monster Hunter, and when you get that free action, you can also recall knowledge for free, which means you can roll initiative, hunt prey, and recall knowledge, and give your allies bonuses all for a free action. It's really good, guys! Interesting to note, this does not work on creatures who are disguised. So if there is a dragon who has disguised themselves as a human, even if dragons are your favorite enemy, you don't get the free action. Running Reload, a favorite for crossbow rangers, you get to take a move action of stride, step, or sneak, and then you can reload all for one action. Fantastic, great for positioning, oftentimes you have to waste an action to reload, so being able to just get an extra action on your turn is always good. Scout's Warning, another really cool support ranger feat. When you roll Perception or Survival for Initiative, you give all of your allies plus one. Important, doesn't matter what they're rolling for Initiative. If the rogue is rolling Stealth and you use Scout's Warning, they still get the plus one circumstance bonus. This is phenomenal. What's important though is you need to decide whether you're telling them through hand signals or if you're just saying, get ready! because uh, that's actually important. It gives it different traits, and for example, if the rogue is around a corner and can't see you, then they don't get the bonus from your hand signals. Or if they're deafened, they can't hear you, and thus, again, can't get the bonus. Snare Specialist. You need to be an expert in crafting and have the snare crafting skill feat, but if you do, you can take this class feat. And when you do, similar to an alchemist's daily preparations, you can prepare three common or uncommon snares that you have in your recipe book for what's known as quick deployment. This means that technically you do not have the snare in your inventory. However, you do have it ready to just pull out and deploy and that creates the snare. Think of it as being able to craft a snare in three actions. Once you're a master in crafting, you can prepare six snares per day, and once you are legendary, you can prepare eight snares per day. When you take this feat, if you're an expert in crafting, you get three different recipes for common or uncommon snares, and then when you increase to master, you get three more, and when you increase to legendary, you get three more. If, let's say, you're already legendary in crafting, when you take this feat, you instantly get all nine. 
Twin parry, same feat that the fighter gets. For a single action, if you are dual wielding, you gain a plus one to armor class until the start of your next turn, or if either of your weapons have the parry trait, you get plus two. Level six, mature animal companion. You mature your animal companion. Additionally, if you have a current hunted prey, even if you don't give your companion a command at all on your turn, then your companion can still spend one action to either stride toward your prey or attack it. One thing you might be noticing comparing the ranger to something like the druid or the beastmaster is that their animal companion feats are actually slower. Druids get to mature their animal companion at level 4, whereas the ranger has to wait until level 6. I think this is partially due to the fact that druids' connection with their companions are magical, whereas the ranger is strictly a trusting bond with their companion, and also, the ranger feats to mature their companion typically come with some kind of upgrade, like the hunt prey option here, and the fact that they get their hunter's edge. So, ranger animal companions are statistically stronger than any other class, which is why they would scale a little bit slower to keep it balanced. Quick snares. You can prepare snares in three actions instead of one minute. These are different from the snares from Snare Specialist. Those ones are free. These ones will still cost resources, but you can put them together in a matter of seconds rather than a full minute. Skirmish Strike is honestly really powerful. You get to step and then strike, or strike and then step. This means you can attack somebody and then move yourself five feet back, potentially out of harm's way. Now this is a flourish, and there's a lot of other flourishes that you might want to use instead, but this is a very safe and practical ability, especially if you're something like a ranged ranger. If you need to step five feet back and then shoot them with your short bow, you're a lot safer off there. Snapshot more or less allows you to use attack of opportunity with ranged weapons. Though it's not as good as it sounds, you can use a ranged weapon in place of a melee weapon in a reaction that calls for it. If a reaction says make a melee strike, you can still use your short bow. However, the range does not increase. What does this mean? Well, it means if someone tries to run past you while you have your bow out, you can shoot them as they walk past you, but you still only have a range of five feet with that attack of opportunity. So if they run 10 feet past you, you can't shoot them. I wish this gave you at least a little bit of increased range, maybe just a 10 foot range for your attack of opportunity with this. I don't really understand why it's still only five feet. Swift Tracker obviously makes you really good at tracking. You no longer move at half speed while tracking and you get additional benefits as your survival proficiency increases. If you hit Master Proficiency, you no longer need to re-roll tracking every hour. Once you succeed once, you are set until you find them. And once you are Legendary, you can track passively and can take a completely different exploration action, such as searching or scouting. Additionally, if you tracked a creature down and initiate combat with them, you can roll Survival for initiative. That's not part of the feat, that's just something you can do. Keep that in mind, players with high survival bonuses. If you roll survival for your proficiency, you get a free stride action at the start of your first turn. Now, it does need to be your first action, and you do need to stride toward your prey, but this is great if you are a melee ranger, especially flurry. If you can, on your first turn, as a free action, get up close to your target, you then have three super accurate attacks you can make with your three actions. Blind Fight is a pretty solid upgrade. Concealed creatures no longer require a flat check to hit them. The DC to hit a hidden creature is reduced to a DC of 5 instead of 11, and you're not flat-footed to creatures that you can't see unless they have a specific effect that makes you flat-footed. Also, also, if you happen to walk by an undetected creature that is your level or lower, they become hidden. If there is a creature hiding in a barrel, and you do not even know they exist, simply by walking past that barrel, you now know they exist. Pretty solid. Deadly aim is not that great, especially as a level eight feat. For one action, and it has the open trait, so it needs to be the first action you take, you inflict a minus two penalty to your attack roll to gain plus four bonus damage. This is not 
great. If this were something like D&D 5th edition, this would be a lot better, but you always have to think carefully about penalties and bonuses in Pathfinder 2e. That minus 2 penalty has a pretty much 20% chance of reducing your chance of getting a crit. If your attack would have been 10 over or 11 over the target's AC, and you take that minus 2, Sure, you get the plus four bonus to damage, but you miss out on probably 2d8 plus four extra damage. It's consistency versus potential. And making this an open, I don't know why they gave it the penalty. I, maybe it was just for balance purposes, as just being able to get a plus four on your first attack each turn would be busted. And this scales up to plus six damage at level 11 and plus eight at level 15. But my thought is... At level 8, 4 extra damage isn't that much, you know? Sure, it's consistent, but at that point, you have multiple damage die, and you have weapon specialization, so you already get flat bonus damage anyway that could be doubled on a crit. I first thought was, oh, this isn't bad for a Flurry Ranger's second or third attack, but you can't do that. It has open. It has to be your first attack. So I don't know who this is for. I don't know which ranger this is for. Eh. Hazard Finder, you're better at finding traps and better at reacting to traps. You get a permanent plus one circumstance bonus to perception checks when seeking traps, plus one circumstance bonus to AC against trap attacks, and plus one bonus to saving throws against traps. Also, some traps specifically require you to search for traps, whereas with this feat, just rolling a normal perception check can show you a trap. Powerful Snares is a must take for a Snare Crafter Ranger. You do need Snare Specialist and Master Proficiency in Crafting, but this allows you to take a Snare's base DC and either use that number or your class DC. This is important because this means low level snares that you like, maybe they're good at immobilizing and deal like a decent chunk of damage, but their DC is too low now, you can now upgrade that to your class DC, which is way higher and is gonna make them way more viable. Really good. Terrain Master, if you took Favored Terrain at level one, you can now spend one hour to change your Favored Terrain to your current terrain. This lasts pretty much indefinitely until you spend a full day outside of this new terrain, at which point it reverts back to your original favored terrain. And keep in mind, yes, this will give you the appropriate bonus at level 11 and onward, depending on which terrain you're currently in, so this could be really good. Warden's Boon is so broken if you have a fighter. For one action, you give one ally the benefits of your Hunt Prey and Hunter's Edge features until the end of their next turn. You can give a fighter flurry. There's no cooldown on this. They're not immune for one hour or anything. You can just have your flurry ranger once per turn just keep giving the fighter flurry and that fighter's multiple attack penalty is suddenly reduced by two. Pathfinder's a fun game. Camouflage. You can... Camouflage. You can take the sneak action, even if you're observed. I don't exactly know this interaction. I need to review the sneak action real quick. Incredible companion. It becomes savage or nimble. Master Monster Hunter, you can use nature to recall knowledge on any creature in the entire multiverse, and you get the bonuses on a success, not just on a critical success. Take this feat! Penetrating Shot. This is another open action for two actions. You pick your hunted prey specifically if it is standing behind another creature that is its size or larger. If it is, you get to attack both of them at full bonus, you roll once and hit them both. This does, however, apply to multiple attack penalties. It also ignores the cover given to the second creature. It's okay, it's just way too specific for my liking. The fact that it has to be your hunted prey, they have to be behind one of their allies, and that ally has to be their size or bigger to grant cover. It's not great. 
Twin Repost. If you are benefiting from Twin Parry while dual wielding and a creature critically fails an attack against you, you can spend your reaction to attack it right back. Alternatively, you can try to disarm it, but disarm in Pathfinder sucks, so why would you? Warden Step. If you're a master in stealth and you're taking the Avoid Notice Exploration action, you can now avoid notice for all of your allies as well, and this does not require anything on their part. They can still do their normal exploration actions, they just get your stealth bonus. Really good. Distracting Shot is pretty good, especially on a Flurry Ranger. If you shoot your hunted prey and critically hit it, or manage to land two distinct hits on your prey in the same turn, it's flat-footed until the start of your next turn. So you don't really get to benefit from this, but your rogue sure does. I don't really know why this is a level 12 feet. Double prey, you can have two hunted prey at once. I don't think this is that broken. I think you could have made this level six or eight and been fine, and then maybe make a triple prey liar level. I don't know. Lightning snares. You need quick snares and snare specialist and master in crafting, but you can put snares down for one action. Second sting is okay. For a single action with the press trait, which means it cannot be your first attack action that turn, you make an attack with one of two weapons. You do need to be dual wielding to use second sting. If that attack should miss, you get to deal damage equal to the damage of your other weapon, excluding damage dice. Let me try to explain this. You're wielding a d4 dagger in one hand and a d6 rapier in the other. You attack first with your rapier, whatever happens. Then you use second sting with your dagger and miss. You can then basically poke them for free with your rapier, but you don't deal any of the damage die. You get to deal your weapon specialization damage, you get to deal your strength modifier, and if you have any kind of damaging runes, you get to deal that as well. But that's it. If you have a striking rapier for 2d6, you don't get to add that at all. So it's not bad. This is really good safety net consistent damage. I would say this might be better on a precision ranger as flurry probably aren't going to miss that much to be honest. But hey, if you're just looking for maximum potential damage without missing, that's a really good backup. Side by side is so stupid. If you and your animal companion are both at least adjacent to the same enemy, that enemy is flat footed to you. You do not need to make a perfect bisecting line between them, which means even if you're fighting a gargantuan creature taking up like four by four squares, as long as you and your animal companion are both next to it, it's flat footed. How fun is that? Sense the unseen. As a reaction, if you fail a seek check to know if there are any enemies around you, you still get to find out if there is something around you. You don't get to know what it is, you don't get to know where it is, but you do get to say, okay GM, I use Sense the Unseen, is there anything here? Do I smell, hear, see, feel, taste something? Tell me. GMs, prepare for them to use that after every single perception check for the rest of the campaign. Shared Prey. You need Warden's Boon and Double Prey as prerequisites. But now, if you choose to only hunt one prey, specifically, you pick one ally who also gets your benefit. You don't even need to sacrifice an action anymore to give that fighter flurry. He just has it now. Ah! Stealthy Companion. Your animal companion gets the camouflage ranger feat. This is so cool, and it's one of the only times I've ever seen an animal companion get a feat like that. Additionally, if you specialized your companion with the ambusher specialization, it increases its stealth proficiency by one rank. Targeting Shot is basically an upgrade to Hunter's Aim. It is only one action, but it does have the press trait, and if you are attacking your hunted prey, you ignore all concealment and all cover. This is pretty good. I don't even know why it has the press trait. Maybe it'd be too powerful without it, but yeah. If someone's around the corner, you can just be like, na 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 Batman. Pfft. He's dead. Like Batman. Warden's Guidance. Even if a creature is invisible or completely obscured, as long as you can see it, 
your allies can see it thanks to your guidance. So even if they all crit fail their perception checks, if you crit succeed yours or you have some kind of spell on you like True Sight, your allies automatically succeed their perception checks. Like a lot of ranger feats, this doesn't work if your allies cannot at least see or hear you. Again, hand symbols or the be the be with words. Now, greater distracting shot is a direct upgrade to distracting shot, and it's real powerful. Now, you get the benefits of distracting shot if you just land a hit on your hunted prey. Plain and simple. Hit them once, doesn't matter if it's a crit, they are now flat-footed until the start of your next turn. If you crit them, or if you hit them twice, they are now flat-footed until the end of your next turn. Which means you get to benefit from the flat-footed. And that also makes it easier to hit them twice next turn, which would make them flat-footed until the end of your next next turn, and it just goes on infinitely. This might as well be permanent flat-footed on your hunted prey, so long as you attack it twice per turn. That's Beautiful. Improved Twin Repost. You now get an extra reaction you can use per turn for Twin Repost. So you can basically counterattack twice instead of once per round. Neat. The best part of this, though, is it does give you an attack of opportunity even if you're not using Twin Parry. This bonus reaction can be used if a creature critically fails a strike against you, even if you're not using Twin Parry. That's good to know. Legendary Monster Hunter increases all of the plus ones from Monster Hunter and makes them plus two. That's plus two to armor class, that's plus two to all three saving throws, that's plus two to the first attack roll made against the creature. That's insane. Specialized Companion is how you specialize your companion, like for the camouflage feat before. Ubiquitous Snares. You can prepare twice as many snares per day. I once again have to plug this video I made last year. It's very relevant to these snares, and Ubiquitous Snares is part of just the beauty of this video, so go check it out. I'll wait. It's like eight minutes long, so I'll just sit here for eight minutes. So, um, how'd your, how, uh, how'd your campaigns go? GMs? Players? Just rolled a seven. Honestly, if you've made it this far into the video, I'm sure you're probably gonna stick around for the whole thing. I can't imagine this awkward segment is gonna kill my uh, retention rate. Fun fact, retention usually falls off within the first 5% of a video. Yeah, usually if you have like a 60% retention rate, about 30, 35% of that drops off in the first minute. It's really fascinating. YouTube analytics are really something else. Did you know we have a Patreon? Look at these guys. These guys are all supporters of the Nonat Ones brand from Patreon. They're all really cool. They're all getting a really cool swashbuckler subclass coming out really soon. It's been a lot of fun. They help me do what I do. If you want to join the Patreon, click the link in the below. It'll take you there and you can get access to a whole bunch of cool homebrew. I made a bunch of kobolds a few months ago. Level 1 to level 20 kobolds. Kobolds of all levels, of all types. If you want to use them in your campaign, $5 on Patreon. You can download all of them right away. Pay $5, pledge, download them, cancel. You're done. $5 for 20 unique monsters. It's pretty cool. I should probably keep talking about the ranger, huh? But what if they haven't finished the snares video? It's like eight minutes and it's only been two. All right, but when they get back from watching the video and they've missed out on like six minutes of content, I'm blaming you, okay? They told me, like you told me, whatever, whatever. Impossible Flurry is insane. Impossible Flurry is only good on a flurry ranger, which makes sense, with agile weapons. For three actions, you attack three times with each weapon. If you have two daggers in hand, each of them makes three attacks for a grand total of six attacks. Now, don't worry, this is balanced because they are all at the maximum multiple attack penalty of minus two. This is three actions to attack six times at minus two. Even if you're not using agile weapons, six attacks at minus four? That's still totally worth it. That's A, six chances to roll a nat 20, and again, minus four hurts? You're probably gonna still hit half of them as long as you're not fighting a massive thing. 
Also, these don't need to be against your hunted prey, and these don't need to be against the same target. If you're surrounded by six enemies, you can stab all of them once. This is an amazing feat, but it's only useful for the Flurry Ranger. Impossible Volley is less impressive, but still really cool. You make a strike at minus two against creatures in a 10-foot burst. This is not a small area. A burst is centered on the corner of a square. You can see the size of a 10-foot burst. You get to make one attack roll at minus two and apply it to the armor class of every single creature in that burst area. Now, unfortunately, not only does the weapon need reload zero in order to use this, but it also needs the volley trait, which means your only option are the longbow and the composite longbow. That is it. If you are wielding any other weapon in the game, you cannot use Impossible Volley. I greatly dislike that. Limiting you to a specific type of weapon, not just like, like limiting you to just bows would be rough enough, but limiting you to specifically long bows just feels bad. Manifold Edge could lead to some really cool Ranger builds. You pick a second level one subclass and gain the level one benefit. Now, this is really good because you can combine two subclasses, but it's also a little bit too easy to min-max this with only three options. Of course, especially at level 18, of course you're gonna take Flurry and Precision. Not only do you get the reduced multiple attack penalty, but now at that level, if Precision is your Masterful Hunter, your original subclass, you also get the 3d8 on the first hit, 2d8 on the second hit, 1d8 on the third hit. I believe there is a strongest ranger at level 20, which would probably be base precision with manifold edge flurry, but overall, do what you want. You know, I'm not here to min-max. It's just easy to see. I feel like I just, I only have an issue with easy to see min-maxes. Like that's clearly just the strongest option at high level, but it's still a cool option. I hope we get more edges going forward. I really want more hunter's edge options for ranger, but I also understand they're really hard to design. I designed one myself, and it's probably my least favorite personal homebrew I've created. It's tough. It's really hard to make a feature that you get at level one and then stays as good as it is all the way until level 17 with no upgrades. That is not easy. Masterful companion! When you hunt prey, your animal companion also gets your level 17 Hunter's Edge upgrade. That's stupid. Perfect shot. Specifically, this is for ranged weapons with reload of one or more, and you have not reloaded since your last turn. For three actions, you make a strike against your hunted prey. If it hits or crits, it deals maximum damage. Every potential dice from the damage dice to the runes to precision damage all automatically roll maximum. If you can combine this with a bunch of bonuses to your attack rolls, with a bunch of penalties to the enemy AC like flat-footed and intimidate, and you can guarantee a crit with this, holy cow. Shadowhunter is weird and doesn't seem that strong, especially for a level 18 feat in competition with all these other options. If you are in natural terrain, you are permanently concealed from anyone you wish to be. That's not bad. Except your hunted prey. Why aren't you concealed from your prey? Why can your prey see you well? I don't get this, and this leads me to the other question, a follow-up question, which of these feats is the outwit ranger supposed to take? Like, I guess Manifold Edge for the extra damage, but that's about it. Outwit rangers have nothing to look forward to at level 18, and at first I'm like, oh, Shadow Hunter, you already have a bonus to stealth, cool, I could be concealed from my prey. No. Why are you concealed from anyone you want except your prey? That seems so backwards! Unless the wording is just weird, and you're always concealed from everyone you choose to, except your prey, who you are always concealed to. Like, if that's the weird wording, but I don't think that's what it says. Discuss. Argue. Feed the algorithm. Just, just like and subscribe to the video.
Legendary Shot. If you took Far Shot earlier on, you can take Legendary Shot, which allows you to attack from up to your fifth range increment at no penalty. Remember, Far Shot is a prerequisite. <laughs> so, <sighs> those are doubled. If you have an Arquebus, you can attack from 1,500 feet away at no penalty. To the Ends of the Earth is the most powerful tracking upgrade in the entire game, as it should be. If you track a creature while it is within 100 feet of you, then no matter where it goes, so long as you're legendary in nature, you can track it. I'm talking teleportation. I'm talking planar travel. If this thing goes to Phrasma's freaking boneyard, you know where it is. This is amazing, and honestly, this is the kind of level 20 feat that I really kind of sink my teeth into. You know, at level 20, a little bit of extra damage or a little bit of extra accuracy or like one extra action per round isn't worth quite as much. But being able to follow that lich when he teleports away with his phylactery, that's what's going to break the campaign at level 20. And that's what you want as a player is the ability to really just be prepared for anything. It's level 20. Everything can teleport. Everything can cross planes. Being able to track that? Or you can hunt three prey. That's cool too, I guess. This also upgrades shared prey. If you only hunt two of them, you can grant the bonus to two allies. So it's really strong, don't get me wrong. This one's, like, compared to the legendary tracking, this is boring, but it is really strong. You know, you can track two enemies and give the benefits of your Hunter's Edge to two allies. It's insanely wide damage. Ultimate Skirmisher. You are immune to difficult terrain. You are immune to greater difficult terrain. You are immune to hazardous terrain that hurts you by walking into it, and you only trigger things like pressure plates, trip wires, and other pressure-related hazards if you want to. You go where you please, and you like it. And those are the ranger feats found in just the core rulebook. Yes, I know there's even more ranger feats in some of the adventures and the advanced player's guide, but I'm already going on an hour and a half recording here. There will be a follow-up supplement video to this going over the APG feats. The reason I'm not tacking them on here is because most of those feats are also spells, so that's gonna be its own 20 to 30 minute video, and I'm exhausted. I've got stuff to do. I gotta get this video done, edited, and uploaded, so bear with me. I know you don't like two-parters, though apparently some of you do. Some of you said in the comments you like them, but I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your patience. I knew a lot of you wanted this ranger guide and I am happy to have been able to bring it to you. I wanna give a huge shout out to my patrons for supporting me in everything I do. Without them, there is no channel, there is no me, there is no rent. I also wanna thank our generous sponsor, Roll for Combat. Don't forget to check out one of their three amazing Pathfinder 2E podcast live play series by clicking the links in the description. And of course, as always, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.